This is From Fear to Fabulous with Natalie Eve Marquis, Episode 7. Welcome to From Fear to Fabulous, the podcast that helps you transform fear, heal emotional wounds, gain absolute clarity, and live a fabulous life. Now here's your host, Master Intuitive Healer, Coach, and Teacher, Natalie Eve Marquis. After hundreds of intuitive readings and coaching sessions, I've learned that when a client keeps telling me, I don't know, it means that they're wrestling with something that feels very important or very risky. And what I learned in helping my clients and myself move through the I don't know block is that we often tell ourselves, I don't know, because we're, we aren't ready to admit the truth to ourselves. And quite often, this is because we're not ready to take action on what we really want. Or maybe we're not ready to confront or share our truths with others, or face our fears, or even leave our comfort zone and be uncomfortable. So there are many reasons we tell ourselves, I don't know. But the biggest one is because we're afraid of taking action. And ultimately, I don't know, buys us time. Unfortunately, it buys us time in a way that is completely unproductive. There is another way, and I'll share that way in a minute, but first I want to share three client examples. The names have been changed to protect privacy. My client Jackie was having an affair, and Rebecca was struggling in her marriage, and Lucy was wrestling with a major career decision. All three of them kept telling me, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what to do. What is the right thing to do? And they kept throwing up their hands saying, I just don't know anything anymore. Which was really interesting because when I intuitively tuned into each one of them, I felt they definitely knew what they wanted. Jackie wanted to divorce her husband and be with her new guy. Rebecca wanted a divorce and the freedom to spread her wings in a new direction. Lucy wanted to follow her passion to become an energy healer. They weren't allowing themselves to know their truth because they were afraid that once they admitted what they really wanted, they would have to take action and that action might completely disrupt their lives. What I told them, and what I'm telling you now, is that you can know your truth without having to take action. For things that feel super risky, it's helpful to separate the knowing what you want from doing what has to be done to get what you want. At least in the beginning, anyway, it's important to give yourself permission to know what you want without having to take action. Phew. Isn't that a relief? It was for these women. When these women gave themselves permission to not act, they were able to admit to themselves what they really wanted almost immediately. In fact, it's a good idea to allow yourself to know your truth and then just sit with that truth for a while and not do anything about it, especially for something that may have a huge impact on your life. Sometimes your true desire has been buried inside for years or decades even, So giving yourself some time to get comfortable with your truth and knowing what you want is a really good idea. It gives you the space to accept and hopefully embrace your truth. So I'd like to share my process for getting past the I don't know block. The overreaching idea is to separate the knowing from the doing. So step number one is simply to admit your truth to yourself. And it is the first and biggest step in finding clarity It's allowing ourselves to admit what we really want and to allow our true heart's desire to be heard by our own heart. To know what you want, you might ask yourself a few questions, such as, what do I really want? Do I really want to live on my own? Do I want to try a new career? Do I want to live with this person or that person? What do I really want? If I could do anything I wanted, what would it be? The next question you could ask yourself to move yourself beyond self-prescribed or culturally prescribed limitations is to ask yourself, if I wasn't worried about anyone or anything, what would I do? If I wasn't worried about anyone or anything else, what would I do? Then maybe ask yourself, what does my heart want? Or what does my soul yearn to experience? These questions will help you get to your own unique truth. 
Step number two is to be with your truth without taking action. Just be with knowing what you want. Your mind will want to try to figure out how to make what you want happen, or it will tell you all the reasons why you can't have what you want. Most of those reasons are just excuses and it's just fear talking. It's not the truth. In my personal experience, when I admit what I really want, whether it's when I wanted to do more art or to start a new business or move my career in a new direction, the fearful messages in my brain got a lot louder. I learned that this was actually a good indication. It was an indication that I was moving towards something that was hugely important for my heart and for my soul. So whether my brain wants to hurry to figure things out or it's telling me all the reasons why it can't happen, I use the same approach, which is to tell my brain to hush. I tell my brain, I hear you, but I don't have to figure this all out right this minute. And I know you're afraid, but right now all we're doing is getting comfortable with knowing what we really want. This practice redirects our brain from its tendency to anxiously overthink things and worry about the future. Although our analytical left brain really wants to help us figure things out, it isn't helpful at this stage. Instead, we need time to sit with things. We need time to explore what our next steps might be. And in some cases, we need time to consult with our trusted advisors, close family friends, a therapist, or a coach. We also need time to access our intuition and inspiration for guidance and new ideas. But that comes from a different part of the brain, the right brain. So while we're giving ourselves time to get used to our true desire, it's also helpful to purposely spend small chunks of time doing things that activate the right brain, such as creative pursuits or going for long walks or drives. I want to share a specific specific example of when I let myself know my truth and I sat with it for a while. So this was probably in, um, let me see, 2010, I believe. And I had taken a short-term stint working as an employee instead of an independent contractor to work with an advertising, to start up an uh, advertising and marketing department for the U.S. branch of a global manufacturing firm. Most of my career, I'd worked for myself as an independent marketing consultant, and I'd only been with this company for two years when I started to get this really huge feel and calling to pursue my art. I had recently discovered an industry called the art licensing industry that just seemed like the perfect fit for the kind of art I love to do. And I had read, recently read an article at that time about a woman named Kathy Davis who had become successful in that industry as a licensed artist. Reading that article lit me on fire. But like I said, I had a full-time job, and the economy really wasn't great at this time. So when this longing came up and this heartfelt desire to pursue a career in art licensing started to bubble up, I just allowed myself to sit with it for a while, to let it sort of percolate, um, to know that this was something, just to let my heart come to terms with, this was something I really wanted to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it at the time. I just allowed myself to sit with that truth for a bit. Eventually, I made the decision to leave that company, and as fate would have it, they offered me a contract to handle their global website design, which ended up giving me the freedom to spend two years designing and creating a portfolio of art that I later launched at the Surtex show in New York City. Making the decision to leave that job enabled me to do contract work in the morning and then pursue my art licensing in the afternoon, which for for me turned out to be heaven. But in the very beginning, before I had all the solutions and all the answers, I first just had to admit my own truth to myself. And I didn't act on it right away. I just allowed myself to sit with it and explore all the various ways I could make that desire a reality. Okay. Okay. So I want you to know, though, as you're sitting with getting comfortable with your own truth, your left brain is going to act up a bit. It's going to get anxious, and it's going to want to try to figure things out or convince you not to do it. And when it does that, just remind yourself that your only job at this point is to just get comfortable with accepting the truth of what you really want. And so sometimes I do this by telling my brain, I know what I want, and I'm going to trust that everything is unfolding for the highest good of all, myself included. When it's time to act, I'll be guided to it, or I'll know what to do, and then I'll do it. Coming to terms with what you truly desire may take days, weeks, or even months, 
But at some point, you'll notice that you start feeling itchy to really start taking action and to figure things out in a more concrete fashion. This is a good indication that you're now ready to explore the possibilities. So step number three is preparing yourself by doing some research and exploring those possibilities. Once you've had time to accept and possibly even embrace finally allowing yourself to have what you want, it's time to get serious about figuring out how to get what you want. Finally, we get to put our racing mind and our analytical left brains to work. And the best process I know for generating lots of new creative ideas is one that I actually used to teach quite a while ago in my creativity workshops. I learned it from the 1926 classic book called The Art of Thought by Graham Wallace. The book outlined four steps for generating new ideas, which is preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification or action. So let's start with preparation. During the preparation stage, our goal is to explore all the options, and I mean all the options. It's important that we don't limit our thinking to only the things we think are possible or doable. Instead, we want to explore and list every single thing we can think of that might make our desire happen, even the crazy ideas that seem far-fetched or pie in the sky. I actually love this part of the process because I love brainstorming. So if you ever want a brainstorming buddy, just, you know, reach out. (laughs) So for me, I like to start by creating a list of my current ideas, you know, what my current thinking is about how I might be able to make my desire happen. This gives me the opportunity to expend some of my anxious thinking and thought energy around making my true desires happen. Just making this list kind of puts my mind at ease a bit. So when you make your list, I want you to be sure to list every single idea, no matter how small or how outrageous it may seem. Exhaust every possible idea you can possibly think of. Just write it all down. The goal here is quantity, not quality. So generate as many ideas, no matter how wild they are, as you can. So, for example, if you want to divorce your spouse and you have two children to care for and you currently don't have a job outside the home, your list might include things like get a job or two or three, find a babysitter, meet an attorney or a mediator, get a divorce, become a stripper to make more money, move in with my parents to save money, I could collect change on the streets. I could move in with my parents, a daughter or a friend, go back to school and get a degree, become a nanny, a hairdresser, a a bartender to pay for bills until I figure everything else out, or do nothing and live like this forever. So as you can see, I'm listing every single option I can think of around that topic, even the far-fetched or crazy ideas. Again, the goal is quantity, not quality. You want to list your crazy ideas as well as your seemingly doable ideas. List every single possibility you can think of. Once you've listed everything you can think of, set aside the list. And if you check in with your body at this point, you'll notice after you've made that list, your body feels a little bit better. This is because you took a little bit of action and you expended some of the emotional and mental energy that's been spinning inside. The next step is to explore and research other options. So here we start looking at how other people have done what we want to do. And to do this, I read, I Google search things. (laughs) So I'll read blog articles, I'll watch YouTube videos, I might even go to the library and check out a few books, I might read a biography or, or two. I'm looking for inspiration, I'm looking for ideas on how other people are doing what I want to do or or even similarly doing what I want to do. And if there are people in your network that, have do, that are doing what you want to do, invite them to lunch and pick their brain. I remember doing this back when I, um, in, early in my career, I was first vice president general manager of an ad agency. And from there, I moved on and I started up the PR and marketing department for a home health agency. And we quadrupled in size during my time there. When I was getting ready to leave there and go out on my own and start my own business, I invited a local woman out uh, for lunch. She was just super successful in her industry. She was actually in real estate. And I just wanted to find out how she created such a successful business. It turns out um, when I did go out on my own, she ended up being my very first client. That wasn't the purpose of the lunch, though. It was just to make a connection and learn from this super successful woman how she did it. And it ended up creating a lifelong connection. 
I, uh, the other idea is if your big dream is to start your own business, you can also consider meeting with someone at the Small Business Development Center or the Service Corps of Retired Executive. I'll leave links to both of those in the show notes. Both of these organizations offer free startup business uh, counseling and workshops, so they're a great resource for you as you're exploring um, ideas for starting your own business if that's what you really want to do. So once we've made our list of possibilities and we've completed our research, the next stage is called incubation. That's the next step, incubation. And once again, at the incubation stage, it's time to set aside our preparatory work and let everything that we did just simmer for a while. So again, we're taking no action at this point because it's time to let our ideas and all that research incubate and germinate. And the goal, or the hope, is that all of these ideas and all of the information that we've collected will bump up against each other, and they'll blend and generate something entirely new from the mashup, something that's just perfect for us because it came from the alchemy of our own brain and inspiration. The best thing you can do while things are incubating is to go do things that you find enjoyable and absorbing. Give your brain a rest from analyzing your situation and everything about it. New ideas will not come from your analytical brain. Your analytical brain is a great tool once you know what you want. It helps create an action plan. But to generate new ideas, that comes from the right brain. And we slip into the right brain and theta levels of consciousness when we're doing things we find pleasurable and absorbing. Things like gardening or knitting, painting, puzzle making, playing pool, or even taking long scenic drives. I love to take long drives. I get tons of inspiration. I always have a little notepad handy, or I might even use my voice recorder on my app, on my phone. How much time one needs for incubation varies from person to person. Sometimes it's a few days or a few weeks. Um, at some point, though, new ideas will float to the surface or they'll drop in out of the blue. For many people, new ideas come while driving. That's one of my favorite ones. Or showering or walking or even as they fall asleep at night. Sometimes the ideas even come in our nighttime dreams. Whenever inspiration or new ideas surface, write it down immediately. I can't stress it enough. When you get a really cool idea, sometimes we think it's so cool and so fabulous, we never forget it. But trust me, forgetting it happens all the time. So when you get that really cool new idea, immediately pull over and write it down. Or like I said, you can record it into the voice recorder in your smartphone. Step number five is illumination and choosing an action step or plan. By now, you've generated some new ideas about how to make your heart's desire happen, and it's time to choose the one or two top ideas that inspire you the most and run with those. Please know there isn't one right or wrong choice to make here. Simply choose the idea that feels the best, the one that makes you feel the most alive, and, and go with that one. More clarity will come as you take action and refine your desires. So let me give you an example of this. When I transitioned from full-time marketing communications work into becoming an intuitive, intuitive energy healer and reader, I had to put myself out there and do the work. And there are many ways I could do the work. I can do sessions in my home. I can do the work at a wellness center. I can do sessions in partnership with other people or as a part of a group. And what I learned by experiencing some of these various scenarios was which one fit my life the best, which one fit my lifestyle the best. I currently work as an independent contractor at a wellness center, so I have hours there. But what I learned is that while I love having in-person sessions, what I really love more is working from home doing sessions by Zoom. My goal eventually is to transition from full-time in-person work to full-time online sessions. This gives me the freedom and flexibility to look, work from anywhere, which is something else I also value. Sometimes, though, we just don't know what we don't know until we go out into the world and we experience it. I couldn't have known that this was the way I like to work best unless I tried it several different ways. So a lot of times we get clarity by going out and doing things. So I just want to encourage you that as you are pursuing your heart's desire, you're going to have some attempts you're going to have to try some different things, and you're going to get clarity along the way, and that's okay. This is how the process works. Step number six is to take action and move through the fear. 
I want you to know that when you're getting ready to take action, you know, when you finally admitted to yourself what your heart's desire is, you've sat with it, you've brainstormed all the ideas, and now you have a really much better idea of what those first two or three first steps are going to be, what those first two or three moves are going to be, I want you to know fear is probably going to come up. In fact, taking the very first step towards our dream to making our hearts a desire reality, it's going to sometimes bring up a lot of fear. I want you to know that fear is normal. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong. It doesn't mean you're heading in the wrong direction. In fact, one of the ways to know if you're still heading in the right direction is to ask yourself, do I really want what's on the other side? Do I really want my heart's desire? If the answer is yes and fear is coming up, all it means is that you're stretching from your comfort zone into your passion zone. So keep moving forward and keep moving through the fear. Another tip to help you move past the inertia or that initial fear is to simply take one tiny baby step, just one little teensy tiny baby step in the direction of your heartfelt desire, and then just take another baby step and then another. Break down your dream into bite-sized tiny baby steps and chunks and just keep taking baby steps. You know, you can climb a mountain by taking one baby step at a time. And if you need more help moving beyond the fear, download my free worksheet called Naming and Moving Beyond Fear. I'll leave a link in the show notes. Or consider working with a coach like me. I live for helping people move beyond fear to pursue their dreams. It's truly an honor to be a part of someone's journey like that. Number seven is to get support and to keep the end goal in mind. It's super important to surround yourself with a support system. It's important because there will be bumps in the road and there will be some failed attempts along the way. That's normal. And we all need someone we can vent to or cry to who will hear us out, who will remind us why we're doing this, and who will encourage us to get up and keep going. A good support system might include close friends, family members, a therapist, a life coach, a mentor, or even a trusted advisor. The individual or individuals we choose for this role should be trustworthy, objective, and able to set aside their own personal desires to help you move towards yours. Lastly, be sure to celebrate significant milestones. This is especially important if obtaining your heart's desire will take months or years to accomplish. Celebrating the milestones will keep you motivated and help you enjoy the journey more. For example, when I began working on this podcast, I decided to write and produce six podcasts all at once. I wanted to have a lot in the queue, so just in case life got busy, I wouldn't get behind. And when I launched those first three episodes live, wow, it felt like a big thing. And so it was definitely cause for celebration. Woohoo, I did it. I launched my first three podcasts, first time ever. It was a lot of heartfelt work, and so it was a good idea to celebrate and commemorate and enjoy that part of the journey. Other milestones I might celebrate are are when I reach my first 10 podcast episodes, or 50, or 100. For you, if you're thinking about changing careers, your first milestone might be after you've invited someone to lunch who's in a similar industry in the one that you're pursuing. Yay, you did it. Celebrate that. You overcame that fear, and you took action. If your dream is a longer one, like starting a new business, your first milestone might be when you get the paperwork for forming a business entity or when you order your first set of business cards. Another milestone might be when you get your first client or customer or when you sell your first product. And yet another milestone might be when you make your first $10,000 and so on. And I'd like you to consider that maybe the very, very first milestone to celebrate is the one where you overcame the I don't knows and you made the decision to embrace your heart's true desire. It's truly important to celebrate the milestones because in the long run, it's really not so much about obtaining your heart's desire as it is about what you experience and who you become as you reach for your dreams. In summary, the seven steps to help you move through the I don't know blocks are, number one, admit your truth to yourself. Number two, be with your truth for a while without taking any action. Number three, preparation. 
Research and consider all the possibilities. Number four, incubation. Let all the ideas and research simmer for a bit. Number five, illumination. When you get those good ideas, write them down and take action. Number six, take action and begin moving through the fear. Number seven, get support and keep the end goal in mind. I hope you found this podcast helpful on how to move through the I don't know blocks. I like to end all of my podcasts with some questions to ponder. And so I'm going to repeat a few from the beginning. And the questions are, what do I really want? If I wasn't worried about anyone or anything else, what would I do? If I could do or be anything I wanted, what would I choose to be or do? What does my heart want? And what does my soul yearn to experience? I'd love to know your answers. Please share your thoughts or questions over on the episode, the podcast episode page at nataliemarquis.com forward slash FTF7. That's nataliemarquis.com forward slash F as in Frank, T as in Tom, F as in Frank, and the number seven. As you go about your day, I hope you catch yourself whenever you say, I don't know. And that you pause for a minute and allow yourself to know and embrace your heart's true desire. That's it for today, everyone. And I hope you have a fabulous day. Thank you for listening to the From Fear to Fabulous podcast. It would be so fabulous if you would take a moment to subscribe and write a quick review about us on iTunes. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like us to cover, then please visit us at nataliemarquee.com.